Hi YouTubers, I'm Rick Michelle and this is Invincible Painting Basics. Welcome to another year of tips and tricks and just plain old fashioned house painting advice. If you're new here and don't know, I was in the painting game for over 40 years. This is the channel for great house painting know-how. Subscribe if you haven't already. This is the channel for great house painting know-how. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now sit back, relax, I'm going to show you how I go about staining and finishing raw timber shelves. Very quickly, I clamped some boards together, ready for the thicknesser, ran them to the thicknesser very quickly, um, at which point now they're ready for a, a good sand, the belt sander first, and then with a finish of a nice 120 sandpaper. So now we're ready to do the staining. Now I've just got all, I'm going to be using, uh, I guess you might call this the old school way. It's an interior stain, it's oil based. It has not got any varnish or clear uh, sort of finish into it like they do nowadays. And why they do that is to speed the process up. And I've done that many, many times uh, simply because of uh, keeping yourself, well, you sharp, you're, to keep your pencil sharpened on a commercial basis. But really, for, do, for do it yourselfers, you're going to find this a lot easier than trying to do the staining with the varnish or the clear coat inside the, var inside the stain, okay? This is much easier. Now, as always, guys, do not work out of the, the bucket, the little can. I've got a brush. It's a china bristle. You can use this. Okay, that's a synthetic nylon brush. That'll work. If you haven't seen my videos on brushes, then you might have a look at those. Uh, they'll give you some ideas on what to do. There's my stain. I've also got a board, just, just to keep it up off the, um, the bench top when I'm doing the edges. I'm gonna do the face, the two edges, and you have to wipe it down. And I'm gonna put it over here behind me, okay, so that I can do the next shelf. I got two shelves. Now the first thing you want to do, it, you just put this on very liberally and you brush it off. And as always, you do your edges first. And it's a messy job. I don't know if you get away with doing this in the, uh, the living room. Now, let's just say you don't have a brush. Well, you could do it with just your rag by just, and I've done that on many occasions. This is an old cotton t-shirt. Don't use polyester, always cotton. You could use a, you could rip up an old cotton sheet. That would work just fine. As long as it's cotton, it has to be cotton, guys. What you could do, probably have to wear gloves for that. I wouldn't worry about it because my hands are ruined. Okay, you could just dip that. I'm not gonna do it because I'm saving this for later. I'm going to show you why. You can dip that in there and, and just start rubbing it on. And it works very well. And you can see I'm just flooding this on there. It's not like paint. You don't have to worry about covering or anything like that. Now normally I'd go by and I'd do this whole board. And then wipe it down. Right now I'm going to show you what I do. So let's just say that you've got this. Okay, you take your clean, your clean rag, do your edges first. Don't worry too much about the bottom side yet. We're going to turn this over. You always want to wipe in the direction of the grain. And you want to have a, a consistent pressure. Don't have more pressure in one spot to try and maybe rub something out. You're going to rub more stain out, okay? Now that's nice and consistent all the way through. Okay, I'm going to just finish up through that. We're going to turn it over and I'm going to show you how to stack these and keep an eye on when you're grabbing things. Okay, I've, I've turned it over. I put stain on this edge. Now two things at least you want to be careful of is because I've painted already done the other side and wiped it, because I've put fresh stain on here, you're going to have to watch the edges. So you're going to have to wipe the edges again because of that little bit that's going over the edges. Okay. So you'd wipe that again. Oh, 
Also, when you're wiping, like I said, you, you go with the grain. Okay, uh, can you see that? That means it's, I haven't wiped it clean enough because you can actually see something. So you you can actually see where the where I haven't wiped off enough of the uh, the stain. Also, it's going across the grain. So you just kind of rework your rag, go over it just with the with the grain. The uh, two bits of timber allows me to actually work on the uh, edges a lot easier. I'm constantly changing my rag, get a nice bit of dry bit on there, and I'm not pressing very hard, just enough to soak up that excess stain. I've done and, and it's and it's only half full so I'm working out of that can if this was full I'd pour some out into another container to work out of otherwise it's almost impossible but because this has been sitting around a while I had a little bit of a skin I cut that skin off and I put just a touch of of turps in there and I haven't stirred it yet I don't want to stir the whole thing through I'm only going to stir the, fir the, the first inch and a half or so with the brush okay it makes it nice you don't want it super thick you don't want any paint super thick you want a nice working consistency. I'll know more when I uh, start to paint. Okay, this top edge gets seen, but I'm not going to paint it just yet. Do my edge, always edges first. Okay, I'm going to hold on to my paint now. That's how I hold on to it. Okay, I can actually force that, o force that over out of the way. Cross the top. Notice how first you put it on. Lay it off, tip it off. When you guys are getting to that edge that, that gets seen, double check it to see if you haven't got any rollover. Okay, it's hard to see, but just make sure. Keep an eye on that. Bring it down, and when you're coming down, make sure. See, I'm, just, I'm still just putting that on. Matter of fact, I'll show you. I'll go all the way across before I even tip it off. Now we've tipped that off up there, that's done for the first coat. Now you don't just start anywhere in the middle and drag it down. You've got a nice big drag mark. You can't see that, but once it's dry you'll see that. So what you do is you take your brush, start at the bottom where you've where you've ended, and you come up very lightly, and you come up and you go past where you went, okay? And as you come up you bring it off like that. Absolutely not one drag mark, not one brush mark. Okay, the same thing again. Work your way down. I'll do two more goes. Going across. It's pretty porous, this. Now we just put the brush down at the bottom, that very lightly. Check my edge. Very good. Now, this is why I haven't painted yet the uh, the top edge. I can grab, I can touch the top edge because there's nothing on it just yet, and I can walk that around like so. Back up on the sticks and up against my little cabinet. Okay, so now I'm ready to do that side. But before I do that side, now let's do my edge problem here because you can't see what you're doing you might miss something so make try to make sure that you you get it all but more importantly you're gonna have drips on the other side so just very lightly get rid of those drips 
done. Okay, so then we do finish this side. The finished edge is now on my side over here, so you want to keep an eye on it. Look, that's how we do that. I'm going to finish the second one tomorrow. We'll come back. I'll show you how we sand this nice and smooth. The second coat goes on even nicer and easier, and uh, it also leaves you with a, a much nicer finish. Our shells have had a whole day for drying. They're good and dry. They're ready for sanding. Now, if I rub my hands over that, it's just super super rough okay we're going to sand that and i use 180 you can get away with maybe 220 or 240. now i i always buy sand here by the roll cut a piece off fold it in thirds there's a very good reason why you fold it in thirds what happens is it if you just take a piece off and you put it together it slides but if you fold it in thirds it doesn't slide at all it allows you to sand a lot easier now when sanding this and as you as you know I've got the two edges here and this one here that will be seen when they're up on my shelf when you're sanding the the edges you got to be really careful not to sand that edge off because it's got stain on it if you get too if you sand too much off you're gonna sand through the finish through the the stain and you're gonna see uh, like a white mark okay it'll be the, the timber and it will show it'll show up pretty bad so just be very careful if you get a lot of people especially in the states they buy sandpaper in the squares okay cut uh, fold that in half and you would cut that okay and then you would fold that you would fold that in thirds Okay. Okay. So, very gently, and you don't—it doesn't take a, a whole lot of sanding to, to smooth that down and knock off that raised, that raised grain. Okay. That's it. That's all that's required. Now on the face of it, very flat. Go with the grain when you sand. Now, the thing here is, you're going to sand, like when you're brushing on your, your clear coat. You go up past where you were to make sure that you've got that. I'm not rubbing very hard. Now, if I take my hand now, go from the, the very spot where I haven't done anything, it's very rough. I go up here, and it's just super smooth. It's, it almost feels like silk. Okay, and don't worry about that. If you're worried about that, brush it off. I've been in it for 40 years. I've never worried too much about it unless it's really, 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 really dusty. Okay, that doesn't do any harm at all. You go straight over the top of that. So let's go ahead. Well, I'll finish sanding these and we'll come back and we'll put the final coat on that. Two things before we start, guys. One, I did exactly the same thing as yesterday. I put in a little bit of, of Terps paint thinner into my uh, clear coat. Okay, just to thin that out a little bit. You're better off too thin than too thick. The other thing is, is I'm in my, my garage. I've got a door open here. I've got the big garage door open on that side. There's a bit of wind coming through, so I'm going to just close this door because there's just too much. And what'll ha what you'll find will happen if you've got windows open and doors open, you've got a, a wind and it's coming across the surface where you're trying to do some work and it's going to set your material up too fast okay you don't want any wind close your windows close all your doors you'll be good to go so let's do this do this again edges first just like yesterday always the edges first also take note guys we're not doing this this is probably one of the worst habits do-it-yourselfers do and i say probably half the professional painters this is what you do Okay, you're just scraping all your material off. Okay, so here we go. Across the top. I haven't done the top yet for reasons like I showed you yesterday. Same thing, put it on and you'll notice it goes on a lot easier. Okay, the porosity of the timber is not there. This just glides over it now. If you're gonna have too much paint on, you're not doing it right. You're gonna get sags and runs and drips, okay? But like yesterday, I've just put it on. 
I haven't done anything about neatening it up yet. Okay, again. We're going to tip it off. Okay, we're not starting in the middle somewhere and pulling down. We're not starting in the middle there, some pulling up. Okay, all the way through. Now, I don't normally do it like that. But for you guys, I recommend doing it that way. Okay, I can do it, and I won't have any brush marks at all. Okay, probably just from years of doing this stuff, but okay, do it like I showed you guys, and you won't have any problems. Okay, again, that's why I haven't done the top. I can actually handle it. I've got the also the back edge, so I can just walk that back up onto my sticks. You might take note how I really work, try to work it onto the surface. The more times you go backwards and forwards, the more even the coat you're going to have. Okay, finish off, tip it off again. Okay, I'm looking good there, guys. I'm going to finish off the next one, and we're finished. So you can see, with that sort of a standalone shelving, it's not so difficult if you do it this way. Uh, like I said, if you do it flat, you have to only do one side at a time, let it dry, turn it over, and do Okay, it'll take a lot longer, but it might be easy for you. Uh, it also will let, allow the surface to flow even better for you guys, probably a lot easier. How good was that? And my desk isn't so cluttered now. I'm a happy chappy and so is my partner. Now let me ask you guys, what did you get from watching that video? How to stain? How to clear coat? How to tip off or, or paint the edges first? Um, I'd really like to know what you guys really thought of it. So if you don't mind, leave a comment below and tell me or ask a question. And don't forget to subscribe so you can view all my videos and not miss any that I upload in the future. There's lots more coming online this year. Also, share my videos with anyone that you may think is in need of some good tips and tricks on painting. It seems almost everyone at some point in their lives attempts a makeover sooner or later. Watch this space for upcoming videos. I'm Rick Michelle, and this is Invincible Painting Basics. See you guys later.